Welcome to Eddie's Research. Research in the news. Is it true or false? Now everything that I'm going to release on this video is available on my website. Um, you can look at that to look at the actual links that I've posted up. Everything is available on the internet and um, I'm just releasing it on video form so you can view it uh, in an easier way of seeing it. Now for this bit of research I'm not looking at a news article like before, but it's something that was mentioned in the YouTube clip. Now we've all done this before, we've watched YouTube clips and you know you take it as gospel, but you know it's like me, I, I don't believe everything I, I see or hear. It was regarding a civil case, and I won't be linking it, but there was something in the video that caught my attention, and I want to find out if what they said is true or not. So what is it? Well, basically it was this. When you go into court, so it's, you, you, you're obviously being charged or something, they bring out the case management files and there's a declaration box which you must sign before. Now only two people can sign this, the defendant, which will be yourself, or your solicitor or stroke lawyer. Without a signature, you can't be charged or sent to prison. So that's what I want to look at and see if it's true or not. And if it is, and someone has represented themselves but not signed this and was sent to prison, well, yeah, you can see what I mean. Anyway, let's see what we can find. So firstly, what is case management? Well, as you can probably guess, there are numerous places that explain, but I'm after an actual law website as opposed to a random website. Fortunately, of course, I have to go to Wikipedia to start off the, the ball rolling. is isn't my favourite place because anyone can edit it, so it's not really a... <coughs> Wiki, you know, in the encyclopedia. Okay, so let's go there first. So here it is, legal case management, Wikipedia. The terms legal case management, the LCM or matter management, refers to a subset of law practice management and cover a range of approaches and technologies used by law firms and courts to leverage knowledge and mythologies for managing the life cycle of a case or matter more effectively. Generally, the term refers to the sophisticated information management and workflow practices that are tailored to meet the legal field's specific needs and requirements. So it looks like it's actually the approach taken by law firms. But I want to find the actual legal forms. So I managed to locate some on the UK Justice website. So this is the, uh, the Justice website. It's a government website, so it's not something I've just cobbled together in the back of my, uh, you know, whatever website. So it's, it's, it's a legit website. Now, there's a few forms in here, as you can tell. Just scroll through it, see how it's content. Lose your mind completely. There they all are. God help you. Um, but I'm just going to look at the main ones that related to this research. Now, sorry, there we go. Part three is the case management. The first is the preparation for trial in a magistrate's court. So here it is. I've opened the PDF version. Uh, there was a Word document, but it opens up into words, so this is the PDF version, obviously. And the parts that you want to look at here, we have this bit about the form, collects information about the court case that the court will need um, and there's the, the contact details for the court the defendant fences prosecution contact details Look, there's there's the defendants uh, details there um, then we have the case management information there and then all the way down here, number 14 is, if I lose, there it is, arrangements for trial, which has the signatures of uh, the prosecution and the defendant and defendant signature, a uh, solicitor there. So it actually looks like the solicitor, and I'm only looking at the defendant's pleading not guilty. Um, the, so, it appears that this is filled in by the solicitor. But what happens if you do defend yourself? 
you don't have a solicitor. You, you know, you, you forego the. Uh, you have the right to uh, have representation. Well, let's have a look and see what the rest of the forms show for now. So, in the same list as the magistrates' courts forms, there's a guidance booklet, and here it is. It's, it's, it gets confusing because you get the years. But it's like, you know, whatever. So uh, the areas to look at is this bit here. Uh, as a general, this form is to be used in any case to be tried in magistrate's court in which a not guilty plea is entered. In the interest of consistent practice and effective case management, the court should insist on observance of this general rule. The court should only depart from this rule in cases where the issue or issues in dispute are so limited and the case so lacking in complexity that it is clear that no advantage will be gained from use of the form other than an aid memoir for proper management of the trial process preparation process the form is prescribed form and no other form may be used as a general rule the form should be used in accordance with these notes for guidance well that just that, that tells you there just a little bit limited case still lacking that's just something there to look at uh, the next bit here before the first hearing even if only the very shortly before or if the court allows during the first hearing the defendant must complete parts one three and four of the form which i showed you before on the bit of the form unless the court otherwise directs the court may require a defendant who intends to plead not guilty to complete these parts of the form before calling the case on the first hearing that hearing of which the not guilty plea is taken the court then will have before it relevant information on the basis of which to give directions for an effective trial. An unrepresentative defendant may need to be excused completion of the form before the hearing. He or she may be taken through by the court instead and the relevant information gathered in that way. And then down here is the purpose of providing for signatures at the end of the form by the parties in the court but the court's direction is to authenticate the record for those to whom it will be sent, and notably those responsible for the conduct of the trial and the care of witnesses. By signing the signatory form, it conforms that the decisions and directions recorded in the form have been approved or noted by the party concerned. So, this final bit explains about the signatures. But what it doesn't say is what happens if you don't sign it. Now you can complete the form in court at the time of the trial, if you defend yourself, as the solicitor won't be there to sign it. You know, if you don't sign it when you're sitting there in the statement room, you've got to sign it there. <clears throat> so remember, the part I'm looking at is, do you both have to sign it, if you have a solicitor, or is the solicitor's binding over yours? If you're defending yourself, what happens if you don't sign it? Now the rules themselves take some reading, and I'm not a lawyer, so I'm trying to look at them in a sort of layman's terms. So for instance, this is the list of the rules. As you can tell, there's, there's quite a lot here. <laughs> there you go. Just his website again. Uh, and I'm looking into a few. I'm highlighting some areas with regards in certain documents or what I think may be deemed a document. So here's one. This is the uh, well, this is the case management uh, rules. It's uh, 24 pages of joy of heaven, and that's what it's it's covering. So we'll scroll down to the bit that I looked at. Criminal procedure rules. Actually, that's the that's the heading. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, this bit here. So, section 19 of the Act, where the court decides that one party to criminal proceedings has incurred costs as a result of an unnecessary or improper act or omission or, or by or on behalf of another party. 19A of the Act, where the court decides that parties incurred costs as a result of an improper, unreasonable, or negligent act or omission on the part of a legal representative. Section 19b of the Act, where the court decides that there has been serious misconduct by a person who is on party. Uh, Talks a bit about that, you can just read it. Uh, 
there. So apparently, if a, if a party fails to comply with the rules, part 19 and 21, there. If a party fails to comply with the rules, the court may refuse to allow the party to induce evidence, may be dismissible, may adverse influences. Um, then the evidence may be admissible or allow as evidence. Now, I'm not sure if this relates to a document or not. It's kind of a bit vague. But it appears it relates to evidence, not the actual case files. Now, we scroll all the way down here to page 22. Other provisions affecting case management. So actual details of the prosecution case, allocations, sending for trial, the indictment, the disclosure, the rules that deal with the evidence, the trials and sentences in the magistrate court. So finally, something that mentions the file forms. This actually mentions the form. This is this is the form. So by the end of all this lot, I'll be so up on court proceedings, I might actually apply for a job there. <clears throat> anyway, let's have a look and see what we got next. Okay, so this is the forms on court records. And just down here is signature forms. This all applies where a form provides for a signature. Unless other legislation otherwise requires or the court otherwise directs, signature may be any written or electronic authentication of the form by or with the authority of the signatory. Uh, well, in fact it isn't. The majority of that section isn't about wanting information on a case. So this that's the only bit that talks about it. The rest of it is just stuff. So let's find the next one. So this is the written witness statements uh, of the procedural rules. So choking here in a minute. <clears throat> so uh, this is the content of the written witness statement. Um, declaration of witness. Witness cannot read the statement. Single declaration by someone else that can read it and with your signature. Unfortunately I've been through all the rules of court procedures and I can't see anything that states that the case management files are needed to sentence. But from what I can gather in the images that I've just shown you is that you have to sign the documents either before the court case or if defending yourself and enter a plea of not guilty at the time of the hearing with the aid of the prosecutor and the judge. And it says you have to sign. Now, what about a contempt of court? So here it all is. Enjoy. Um, but the basics are obstructive, disruptive, insulting, imit in imitating, intimidating, affecting court proceedings, refusing to give evidence and recording. So is not signing the document contempt of court as you're actually affecting the court proceedings? So now this is very interesting. Now, when I was trying to figure out contempt of court for not signing, I found this website, or this, this bit, which again, trying to find this is, is just an absolute miracle, but I found it. And here it is. Power of the court to require a document to be verified. The court may order a person who has failed to verify a document in accordance with the rule 17.2 to verify the document. Any party may apply for an order of the paragraph. So the court can order you to sign it. And I'm assuming if you don't comply, you'll be in contempt of court. Curious if anyone's actually stood the ground on this one. I'm very curious if actually anybody has said that they're not going to sign it. And what happens? Do you go contempt to court about 20 times? 
So from what I can gather, yes, there are documents that need to be signed for the court, and these are called the case management files. They can be signed by either you or your solicitor. If you have a solicitor representing you, then if you refuse to sign it or are unsure, they will automatically sign it. But if you represent yourself and don't sign it at the time, in court they will ask you to complete and sign it. But if you don't, the judge can order you to sign it. And if you still don't, you'll probably be in contempt of court as you're disrupting the court proceedings. Now in case of the clip that I saw, maybe due to the few times the contempt of court times and the fact it was a motion offence, he had no insurance at the time. The court decided not to go ahead with the case due to timing, etc. Who knows? But the grand scheme of things, you'd probably be best signing. And if you're really guilty, don't utter a single word in your interview so that they can't use anything, not even a no comment against you. <laughs> if you know what I mean. So, hopefully you've enjoyed watching this. Um, it is quite in-depth, say the least. Um, if you ever go to... The, every country will have something like this. But if ever you go to your justice website and try to figure out where anything comes from, there are so many parts, so many areas. Do you understand why lawyers now just... You, it's probably best to get somebody to cover for you. I mean, not cover for you, uh, stand for you. Okay, well, thank you for watching this. Uh, please add a comment if you've enjoyed this or you know a little bit more about this, if you've never signed this or whatever, if you can actually produce the, um, you know, like a, a law case that where this happened or something like that. Okay, thank you for watching and goodbye.